way to the, the various states, Bihar, Orisha, and so on. So we could not ramp up quick enough, but we were happy with the result. I leave the floor open for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking your question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone? Who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one. First question is from the line of Disha Said from Andrew. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Can I open this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, I just wanted to check uh, what is the uh, outlook for cooker and cookware considering the environment? Well, the cookware outlook is excellent, actually very, very good. Uh, the pressure cooker outlets also have improved dramatically uh, since August. And uh, we are seeing uh, double-digit growth, in fact, near 20% growth for the last three months. I'm including October in this and the first, first month of the third quarter. So we are pretty buoyant about these two categories. So, so when you mentioned the 20% growth, you were saying about pressure cooker. Yes. And, yes. and cookware both. Cookware yes. will probably be more than 20% if yes. we can supply. Okay. Uh, so, are the supply issues solved better than due to? Yeah, they're much better now, yes. Yeah. And, sir, secondly, I just wanted to ask last two questions. Uh, what is the market share of uh, uh, us uh, in cooker, pressure cooker, and cookware? Well, the in pressure cookers, our market share in volume terms are near 30%, and in cookware, we are over 35%. Okay, and which was, uh, how much it was last year? Around similar, similar range only. Okay, and so in terms of uh, steel cook pressure cooker, uh, are how many products, like from the pressure cooker sales, how much is steel products and how much is the aluminum pressure cookers? Like, is it 75, 25 or? Around 70, 30. It will be 70, 30. And sir, so, uh, in terms of competitors, are they in the same line or they are still with more aluminum? Sorry, say that again. So, in terms of competition, I'm just uh, trying to understand is there a mix around same 70, 30 aluminum and steel cookware, a cooker, pressure cooker? I think, or or steel, I think our share in stainless steel would be higher. Okay. Oh, cooker are uh, 20 Sorry, to high. I'll request you to come back in the question queue for a follow up question. Next question is from the line of Samir Gupta from ISL Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir, I have a few questions. Uh, we will take on take on one uh, one at a time, sir. So the supply chain issues that you have highlighted in your press release, could you elaborate? Could you elaborate a little more on these? Was this an industry wide uh, phenomena, or it was specific to your own? Because sir, the peers in this field have seen uh, pretty good growth this quarter. Like Gandhi Mati has seen a 20% growth. Compton in its plan business has seen a 30% growth. So just trying to understand this uh, July decline for you. So you know when we when we opened uh, from the uh, uh, from the lockdown, uh, we, we obviously no one had an idea of uh, how the demand was going to pan out. And many of you know that in some cases, especially in the products that you just mentioned of Gandhi Mati, which is pressure cooker, I mean, mixer grinders and gas stoves, for us, they are outsourced out of vendors. Now, our vendors had lost their labor during the lockdown, and they couldn't get them back because each of these places had very different quarantine rules, and it was very difficult for them to get back the labor. It took a good two or three months. And like that, Kandimati, for example, has their own manufacturing on these products. So, 
some of these problems came in. So we, by the time we actually stabilized, we fell into the second quarter middle. That's where we were, uh, you know, coming in. And, and also the fact that the demand was far higher than what we had anticipated. And therefore you are seeing this. That is why I am saying to you that you must look at the August to October period, which has been very, very robust for us during this period. And we are at the 20% level of growth after the rings have stabilized. Uh, great, sir. And this kind of a trend has not been visible in cookers, is it? Because cookers have seen a bigger, cookers have actually seen a decline for the quarter despite this uh, good growth. So, is there a similar problem you face in cookers also in July? Even the pressure cookers, and I'm talking about volume growth, has been in the region of 20% during the period of August to October. You see, we have also, yeah. Got it, sir. That's very helpful. But uh, what I was asking was in July, the similar issue of labor was impacting our pressure cooker segment also. And that is what I was about to tell you. We had to also realign our promotion. We have an exchange scheme which we had to realign to one month later because we had the lockdown and we lost the month of April. So it was also a promotion driven issue, and that is why our growth started from August because things had to come fall in place from that month onwards. So all got it is as ground growth. Mm -hmm. Got it, sir. That's very helpful. And secondly, sir, this 20% uh, kind of a growth, uh, uh, how sustainable do you think are these demand trends? I mean, is there an angle of pent-up demand here or there is just because increased in-home cooking and demand for convenience products, will that offset or is it enough to offset? Because why I'm asking this is because even before COVID, our growth was going in low single digits. And the overall macro in terms of purchasing power and uh, income level, that is only deteriorated because of COVID. So how do you think these demand trends are sustainable? Well, for the short term, it does seem like it's going on well. I, I don't want to comment on what will happen in the medium and long term. Uh, focusing on the next two quarters, uh, long term, uh, uh, once the economy improves, we will know whether we'll go back to the 18, 19, 16, it's not will be further growth. I all of us will be keeping a finger crossed on that. Got it, sir. And one last question, if I may squeeze in. Uh, this is uh, particularly on the margin front, sir. And this quarter actually across the uh, players where there is a large unorganized component, we have seen uh, a significant margin expansion driven by you know, lower trade discounts, cash discounts and all. And uh, we are not witnessing a similar kind of margin expansion in TTK and input costs, uh, you can correct me if I am wrong, in general are on the benign side. So what is happening on the margin side, sir? And any outlook you can share? So listen, we, we were very clear that we were going to protect the interest of all our stakeholders in the system. So we have made no knee-jerk reactions, no changes to our pricing policy, no changes to our advertising policy. We haven't saved advertising money to shore up margins. We haven't thrown out people to shore up margins. We have, we have done things to keep things as stable as ever, and I am sure our channel partners are appreciating the fact that we have not shortchanged anybody. In this entire process, even though we had a difficult time supplying, we were being as fair as possible to all channels so that we do not upset anybody. So we have looked for stability and sustainability rather than any short-term gain. Great, sir. That's very helpful, sir. Answers all my questions. I'll come back in the queue if I have any follow-ups. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Achal Lohare from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question was, uh, you know, with respect to South versus non-South, uh, if you could comment about uh, the recovery part and uh, specifically with respect to, uh, uh, you know, the uh, cooker, cookware, uh, for, as in the uh, rural uh, growth. So uh, we are seeing that uh, the South is uh, relatively speaking at a lower growth than the non-South. That is one thing. Secondly, we are also seeing that, relatively speaking, the lower pop freighter, which is the class one town downwards, is seeing a higher growth than uh, your metros. So that is for sure. Uh, we, I think the rural market demand, which is getting satisfied out of feeder towns, we are seeing a very positive 
uh, development there also. Even from the online sales, we see that the smaller towns are showing a higher growth than the bigger towns. Those are the trends that we are seeing. And uh, any comment on the rural part for us in terms of the growth in absolute number, like uh, in terms of the mix, uh, what is it? And, uh, uh, you know, the uh, status of the uh, the tie-up with the uh, MFIs? So, as you correctly said, the, the, the rural which I spoke to you was the non-MFI part of the business. The MFI part of the business was not active for most of the quarter last quarter because they were waiting for the moratorium to get lifted before they could start their operations and remember that the, we were a piggyback uh, product line for them their primary product line was to give loans for vocation so that has now started and that is also looking good going forward into the q3 Right. Uh, would you be able to comment on what has been the mix uh, from the MFI uh, in second quarter or so first quarter? Even last quarter, virtually nothing. Okay. But the good thing is that it started happening, it started coming into uh, being uh, towards the end of the quarter. Towards October was robust. October was robust. Yes. That's great. Sir, uh, wanted to ask, uh, sorry, I'm hopping about the same question. Uh, uh, you said uh, in the first quarter earnings call, uh, you said July is uh, uh, looking good. So I was curious that, uh, you know, August, September, we are talking about 20% growth. Uh, 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 what's, had July seen a double digit decline, uh, a significant decline in the month of July? As was mentioned, our schemes are such that we ran a scheme in July last year, and we did not run that scheme in July this year. So there was a decline in July, but the same scheme we ran in August this year, which showed a double-digit growth. Okay, okay. That is to do with the base thing. Okay. That Understood. is correct. Understood, sir. And this last question, if I may, with respect to uh, exports, uh, the exports have seen a good number. Uh, so. Uh, are things picking up? Uh, have you seen any new client addition? And how do we look at the exports from, let's say, for next couple of year perspective? Unfortunately, for exports, our orders far exceed our capacity. And so whatever capacity we have, we are diverting to the domestic market. So we are putting exports on the back burner. Once we start building capacities, our exports could grow by double. And by when do you think uh, we will be able to add capacities in next year? Hopefully by end of December, early January. Okay. Uh, what is the current utilization? Uh, would you be able to comment on for uh, uh, cooker and appliances? Both 100%. Understood. Uh, great. I'll come back in the queue for further questions. So thank you mm -hmm. very much. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Manish Podar from Nibon, India. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, just want to understand a uh, few things. So first was, have you all taken any price increase during this quarter or let's say in the month of October? Uh, not in the Q2, not in October, but yes, we have announced a price increase in November on uh, some of our appliances. So uh, would you be able to call that out? How, how much is it on blended basis? So on some of our products like mixer grinders and gas stoves, the price increase is between four and a half and six percent. And uh, this uh, sales pickup, which you've seen in Q2, do you, do you believe this is uh, end market retail sales, or uh, you know there there was some amount of channel which was closed in Q1, so this is the normalization of inventory which has happened in Q2? No, 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 no. This is all of it is the, the retail sales. Okay, and just uh, one final one, if I can, is that uh, how much is e-commerce contribution to our overall sales in Q2? 25%. And, uh, okay, and just uh, one option to that is that, uh, do you see your category uh, having material purchases during this, you know, this events done by the online players? Is uh, because uh, generally your, uh, traditionally your category has not been, uh, you know, uh, to uh, you know, to online oriented. So I'm just trying to understand in this, uh, you know, this month of October, when the online players were running a lot of, uh, you know, this uh, sale days, 
does your category see significant uh, demand during those days yes but we could not supply okay okay fine Th- thank you so much yes thank you next part next participant is akshay kharia from multi act please go ahead um hi sir thank you for the opportunity um so my question was that uh, you know what percentage of our uh, uh, overall sales would be uh, manufactured in house and what would be outsourced um this i'm asking with regards to you know uh, because there is a very uh, strong demand environment and in such case uh, maybe the outsourced uh, participants uh, the uh, the oem uh, the contract manufacturers would be wanting to squeeze in some higher margins uh, because uh, the, because of this high demand environment so let me disabuse uh, you our contractors our vendors are long term vendors they've been with us more than 10 15 years and they won't take it at a one time opportunity to squeeze us they will not and they do not and uh, if your first question how much is in house how much is this house about two third one third okay so we are not seeing any pricing pressure over no 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 categorically no okay okay thank you that's all sir so much yeah thank you very much next question is from the line of meera vasa from anand rathi please go ahead hello sir and thank you very much for the opportunity mm-hmm. so sir as i believe we are seeding two new growth categories that is cleaning solutions and premium products so yeah. would it be possible for you to share some outlook uh, across both these categories especially the premium products and the third one i believe is going to be the uh, the dinnerware category so how do you intend to expand these i believe first two categories are already there in initial stages but by what time do you see these three category is playing a meaningful role so uh, if if you look at the uh, cleaning solutions in fact uh, irrespective of the lockdown they are positive vis-a-vis last year and uh, and by a substantial margin so we are looking at some health related hygiene related products that are doing exceedingly well for example our food and vegetable cleaners and things like that mm-hmm. we have many new products in the pipeline in that area uh the other side which you're talking about the premium products i'm not sure what you're referring to i don't know whether you're referring to the prestige lifestyle store that we launched yes uh, uh that is still work in progress as i said that we said to you uh, we have uh, started off in bangalore as a starting point and a test marketing point and you will see some activity happening around those products in the next couple of months and hopefully after 3 months of that activity will be in a better position to answer that question as to how much that is going to give us in terms of contribution to overall sales coming to the last point on dinnerware yes we've launched uh, stainless steel casseroles as a start point uh, too early to say how much that will do but it's a nice category for us uh, if that succeeds then we have uh, many other things in the pipeline based on the success of this category to actually come back again we will require a couple of quarters to decide how this is because the sizable market we'd like to do it carefully thank you very much sir thank you very much next question is from the line of charanjit singh from bsc mutual fund please go ahead uh, <clears throat> hello sir thanks for the opportunity Uh, sir if you can give us some color in terms of what is the kind of market growth rate for the categories which we are in uh, during this uh, last quarter very difficult to predict very difficult because the quarter is just over market growth rate you will get only after surveys are done it will take about another three months or four months for us to get that data okay sir and uh, sir what we have seen is that across companies companies have you know got this uh, uh, time frame during the covid or lockdown time in terms of looking at their cost structures and you know uh, maybe taking some uh, actions in terms of rationalizing that cost structures be it you know ad spending moving to digital or rentals so those kind of things so have you done any kind of those kind of exercise why you know it's good to see that we maintained our level of you know operating levels what we wanted to do but is there a you know uh, inward looking in terms of the cost which could have rationalized and then that benefit can come through yes chandru 
Yeah, so, so there are two parts to this. One is there have been several initiatives that we have undertaken in the company towards digitization, and if I would like to use that word. Uh, this is towards many of our processes, for example, transacting with our channel partners, for example, doing travel when it's necessary, otherwise keeping the work, well, keeping the job going, etc., etc. Our factories themselves have shown higher levels of uh, productivity in the last few months. Uh, the, uh, there is a lot that we are doing in terms of uh, moving advertising to digital because of the way the customer is also moving in that direction. But we have also decided to keep the main structure going until these things start bearing fruit. Because for us, in all these years, you will notice that we've had a very stable allocation to advertising and brand building, which has done us a good uh, thing in the past. And unless we, these new initiatives start bearing fruit, we would not like to cut costs. Mm -hmm. So, is there, you know, a kind of a, a quantifiable number in terms of how much benefit we can get uh, from these specialization? Is there a targeted? Uh, I'll give you that number now. We need those those initiatives to bear fruit first. Let me ask you that differently. We do not take initiatives to short-term cut costs. That is very dangerous for the long-term growth of the company. With the digitization effort that we have taken, is to improve working is to improve the efficiency and to improve the market access. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, and on the supply chain part, so now at what level of you know, supply chain uh, in terms of our vendors they are at and uh, do we foresee that uh, uh, all these things or are, are we trying to now have, you know, kind of a multiple vendors or sourcing alternatively, are, they, are we working on that to some extent? You see, we told the market that we will stop import from China in this quarter, second quarter. And that added a double whammy to us because as it is, the production with the vendors was low. And then we stopped from China. So we had to make that up. So it is true that we did have shortages in the quarter, second quarter. But that has improved fairly dramatically. Now we're back to where we were, square one. Okay, okay. Fine. So if I can just squeeze in last question uh, on the sir, MFI channel, so do we think? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Hello. Can, hello. Can't can hear you. Me? Hello. Come hello. closer to the phone. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Ah, yeah. Now here we can. Yes, sir. So just on the MFI channel, do we think that uh, the normalization can start coming from Q3? Yes, we yes. can start it already. Okay. Okay. That's all for myself, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star in one. Next question is from the line of Bhavin Vidhalani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, uh, congratulations for good number amidst uh, difficult time. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, on the growth rate, uh, if it will be uh, useful if you could break up uh, uh, month-wise uh, and uh, what was the growth uh, in the exit month of uh, the quarter? Uh, you did mention that the growth in the last three months is about uh, 20%. So if you're looking at uh, August, we were, we were about 20%. If you're looking at, we were at what? No, much more than that. If you're looking at, I don't have exactly the month wise, but August and September put together was 23%. October last year was the Diwali month. It was the highest month ever. On that, we've grown by 15%. Cumulative, uh, August, September, October is at about 20%. Uh, sure. Uh, and uh, any color on the performance of the newly launched uh, Swatch branch? Uh, uh, what percentage of the total portfolio it is now? And uh, how are you seeing the growth rate because of this new uh, introduction that we have seen? 95% of our sales of pressure cookers currently is in the Swatch platform. The 5% is there because if there's any old stock left over, we probably are clearing that stock. But the platform has met with a very good success. We've used this platform as a distribution enhancer in the non-South markets, you know, in some of our relatively weaker geographies. 
We've added several new towns in a big way. We've done specific promotions to add 2,000 plus outlets in the last single one quarter. Uh, and we are looking at we are looking at our all-time high internet cooker sales in October. So we are looking at a very good situation here. And going forward, we think it will continue that way. Sure. Uh, great. Uh, uh, on, on the uh, appliances side, uh, come closer to the phone, please. Uh, sure. So is, is it better now? I can't hear you. No. Uh, okay. Uh, that's okay. So is it better now, sir? Can, can you? Am I no, audible? No, come closer to the phone. So I'm, I'm as close as I can get, sir. Uh, maybe I'll come back in the queue, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one. Next question is from the line of Devang Patel from NAS Asset Management. Please go ahead. So my question was on receivables. Did we have any uh, problem in collecting? Uh, money from the debtors because the uh, debtors have gone up even though our Q1 sales was not that great. And we've seen a lot of consumers. The debtors have come down dramatically from about 48 days to 32 days. Where did you get that information? No, I'm, I'm saying on an absolute number. The absolute number would be high because our August, September sales were very high. But in terms of the aging of the receivables, it's, it's probably at its best in the last five years. It's at about 35 days, which is which is brilliant. We have had no problems at all in collections. They've been very robust. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitalani from SBM Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, hope I'm audible. Uh, would it be uh, useful if you could give more color on the appliances uh, segment? Uh, the growth within the categories and how do we see over the next uh, one year? That That is all. We are, I would suggest we wait for a quarter before we can put any color on these things. We can tell you that all our core categories are growing extremely well in the trade and in our channel partners. And it's been, it's, uh, it's been a very good situation. How this is going to come keep continuing, I think we need one more quarter for that. Sure. But for the quarter gone by, if you could give us some color, the growth in the mixer grinder. Mixer we have grown, we have grown, uh, overall we have not grown because we had a certain uh, proportion of the rural LFI channel which did not work this year. This year, We also had certain large format sales last year which was not there this year. But if you look at our general trade sales, we've grown by 45% in mixer grinders. We've grown by high double digits in gas stoves. So, if you're looking at some of the other products like induction cooktop, we've grown by 47% this year. If you're looking at uh, uh, kettles, it's almost double. So, how this will sustain, I don't know, honestly. Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for taking my question. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Srinath V from Bellwether. Please go ahead. So just want to understand uh, the role of online uh, going forward uh, and uh, what are our market shares in the e-com segment uh, versus uh, uh, general trade. So just wanted uh, your uh, views on that, sir. So we believe that the consumer has gravitated towards online after the COVID issue, and I think that trend is going to continue. You are looking at more and more people shopping online and going outside less and less. Uh, having said that, I think uh, we continue to be leaders in the online platform as well, uh, largely mirroring our offline market share on that side. Okay, so we, we do have similar market shares both in online and offline. Okay, great. Uh, the and you will know that we were one of the early people of the block to have e-com fulfillment centers. We have five of them across the country. So we've invested quite substantially in the online business. Got it. Uh, sir, also wanted to understand the, the unorganized to organized shift, uh, given the kind of difficulties in many categories and unorganized sectors faced. Uh, are, are you, as the festive season kicks in, um, and this is the peak shopping season in South, so just want to understand, are you seeing the re-emergence or 
some of these factories reopening or uh, uh, have they not come back to the market after leaving the market in april may june no they have started coming back many of them have started advertising as well as you might be probably seeing but i think in the minds of the consumer i think it's way beyond uh, just price today um uh, the lockdown told them that uh, buying a good brand gives them the assurance of good after sales service so i think uh, over a period of time uh, there would be uh, a gain of brands uh, not just ttk precis but good brands in this uh, post pandemic world thank you sir that's all from my side thank you very much next question is from the line of achal lohare from jm financial please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for the follow up opportunity sir um, just wanted to understand in terms of the supply disruption uh, how, uh, would you have any estimate as to how much sales uh, would have uh, uh, we have would have lost uh, in second quarter as of uh, september we were carrying forward 70 crores of orders which we could not uh, fulfill so is it fair to say that uh, the sales are not really lost uh, permanently but just the, no, that, uh, uh, most the of that sales most of that sales will not happen because for example if there was if there were orders online during the sale days that sale is gone okay okay uh, but we uh, will be carrying we carry forward orders in october also understood and uh, any particular categories where we had uh, supply is in disruption which was major one or it was across the board in appliances no largest in cookware uh cookware uh, uh, i was under the impression that most of that is uh, in house production it yes. is all in house production yes but there is a huge shortage we we have a capacity to produce 4 lakh pieces per month last year we sold about 35 lakhs uh which is roughly 3 lakhs per month now the demand is 6 lakhs per month so let me let me tell you this way that even the export orders had multiplied during this period and uh, we had a huge demand situation in india as well and uh, therefore all of this coming together put huge pressure i mean luckily for us we had large opening stocks so we managed for some time but now by towards the end of the quarter we obviously couldn't uh, handle that kind of demand we have sold our highest ever sales of precious in cookware in this quarter we crossed uh, more than 2 billion pieces actually uh, but yes we could have sold even more so that's that's more on the uh, the short capacity i would say but uh yeah like you said supply disruption uh, i i imagine that is for the vendors one second it's not just our suppliers for example i need handles which i don't make in house i need my handle supplier to give me handles i need the glass lid i need glass lid now those are downstream suppliers who were in necessarily at their full capacity because they lost their labor that's what we were trying to tell you right understood understood so vendors uh, for our uh, Uh, raw, uh, raw material or consumables, okay. as well as the finished goods. Yes, exactly. yes. Exactly. Understood. Understood. And um, uh, with respect to, uh, so that would that be the case even for the competition, or, uh, or wasn't uh, that the case as such? I think you should ask the competition. And and inform us also. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, in terms of the capex, uh, what is the number we are looking at? Uh, for a 521 22 broadly and how do we plan to this uh, you know uh, deploy our cash flows given the significant cash we have in the balance sheet well we i suppose we will be spending about 50 crores in terms of capex for uh, 21 20 20 uh, 2021 and uh, we will uh, be looking at acquisitions we look at all kinds of things for the cash that we've got plus we've just declared that uh, an additional dividend today right right and just one more comment if you could uh, uh, also comment on or would uh, where are we in terms of the recovery i know uh, the numbers are uh, positive for the quarter but we have seen that the base has been fairly weak for a while now so how do you look at uh, that acquisition they were doing brilliantly brilliantly in the in this year and then they've done uh, 
covid happened so they've gone into the second lockdown in britain for a month so we'll have to wait and see how this pans out but they're doing very well compared to last year so I, i think i think more than anything else i think uh, that that company has completely transformed itself in terms of its online presence for example it's uh, it's actually set up a very good online marketing and sales setup which is why the company is doing exceedingly well at this point in time in england any pop any target you could talk about like what kind of revenue or something we could look at the second lockdown has allowed us uh, has completely uh, removed any guidance prospects from our side on that front over there got it got it uh, that's helpful sir thank you so much thank you very much anyone who wishes to ask a question you may press star and one next question is from the line of disha said from annual shares in stock please go ahead hello hello disha go ahead your line is in talk yes yeah uh, so uh, we wanted to ask that uh, you can't hear you disha your voice you've gone off the phone now is it fine yeah your voice is still breaking uh, sorry no i think it's getting better okay uh, so i uh, so wanted to ask the uh, september office sales were up 23 percent so i was not i was not understanding why our sales are up only 22 percent while uh, because uh, so july was down double digits and what is the reason i, I was not getting it okay let me explain try and explain that again we yeah. normally have a major trade promotion as a follow up to the first quarter sales in july every year this year we lost the month of april and half of may so that trade promotion was not run in july it was announced well in advance that it would be run in august so therefore the sales shifted from july to august that is why i am telling you this period of july august september i mean uh, you have been uh, august september october so it was primarily because we had to reshape the trade promotion because of the lost one month in the first quarter okay so it was uh, we had to also organize the supply chain to meet that demand we needed that time oh so uh, it was almost nil to negative sales for july that's why the whole thing there was no nil to negative i can put it another way for you if you add july plus august of last year and compare it with july plus august of this year it was exactly on par it was exactly on par okay 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 got it sir so thank so you thank you some more light on that okay okay and this is across all uh, your segments like cooker cookware and appliances as we, as we told you the pressure cooker uh charge started in august and from then on the pressure cookers have also grown so if you do this july plus august it will be on par if you take august september october we are at 20% plus growth okay so okay, answer i mean what you said is pressure cooker demand was low in july or is the same promotion thing for july the same promotion thing okay 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 sir got it thank you so much sorry yeah. thank you very much Next question is from the line of Janki Raman from Franklin Templeton Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Good evening. Um, so the uh, August and September, where you mentioned that the sales was quite robust for you, is there any way for you to tell us whether the secondary sales were all as good as uh, the sales that you had? Yes. the secondary sales was quite robust the pipeline has not been overloaded we are seeing secondary and tertiaries because we are seeing sustained demand in october which we have filled and we are seeing sustained demand in first first week of november as well so it's not as if we've been loading the pipeline and remember that online goes straight to this consumer of course they will not be any uh inventory build up in online and since you mentioned this order book uh, that you had some order book entering into um the october month also so typically how does it work to your uh, 
uh, dealers actually place an order order with you at the beginning of the month? Sir, they place an order with us whenever they want to place an order with us. We accumulate those orders, keep supplying, and by the month end, some orders will not be supplied. Okay, so this is a rolling kind of an order book. Yes, yes. It's not a one time. It's not a once a month only. We take orders. Let me try and explain that. What Chairman told you was that there was a fill rate that was less than hundred percent, and those orders, some of them came back in October, some of them were new orders in October, some of them were lost orders. This is something that happens on a regular basis. The point he was trying to make was that if we had more inventory, we probably would have been doing even better than what we have shown you right now. Have I answered that? And uh, yes, and since you also mentioned that the demand momentum has continued the December quarter also, so now do you have um, uh, have you beefed up your supply adequately to to cater to this demand? Yes. Word adequately is difficult to define. We have beefed up our supply to meet what we think is demand, but if the demand outstrips that, we still won't. Hello? Right. Because some of the statistics that you threw uh, that uh, as against 35 or 3 lakhs per month of cook were last year. So this year you said just in one quarter you have done 20 lakhs. These are like very impressive numbers. What is leading to this kind of um, sharp increase in demand? Your guess is as good as mine. Everybody says it's because people are working from home. They're cooking more at home. They're not going out to eat. So they want new better vessels, but newer products in the kitchen. That's what they say. Well, let me tell you, cookware, especially non-stick cookware, demand increasing is not just an India phenomenon. What we are seeing is it's a worldwide phenomenon. Hello? Right. right. And uh, just one more specific question, sir. Um, I actually personally felt this experience. There seems to be some meaningful price difference between some of your popular products, online or even the smart kitchen route. And what is your philosophy is on pricing on these uh, channels? Do you, do you follow some differential pricing? Uh, how do you manage this uh, channel pricing uh, conflict? Our attempt is to keep a constant pricing across channels. Now that is a very utopian uh, desire. Uh, what we do tell all our channel partners is this is the kind of pricing we recommend you to sell uh, to the retailer. Okay, free to sell. But uh, by law, you know they are free to sell at whatever prices. So what we try and do is actually try and make, uh, give them advices. The second thing is as far as online is concerned, sometimes you might find a price that is cheaper because they want to burn money on that month or we would have given them an exclusive offering which is not there on offline. Similarly, we give exclusive offerings to offline which is not there online to ensure that they retain their competitive edge. Right. So the price at which the online merchant decides to sell your stock you, that is not under your control, is it? No, it is not. However, it is controlled. Yeah. You are not allowed to control that by law. Hello? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, suppose, I, um, uh, let's say, I buy a, a prestige uh, cookware online on Amazon. The uh, Will the invoice very highly prestige or Amazon? Amazon. Who is the seller on the marketplace? You will never get an invoice from Amazon. You will get an invoice from the seller on that marketplace on Amazon. That seller could be a Let's say that it is one of those. Seller, etc. And if, if in your online sales, <coughs> Uh, in the same ticket, except 
Mr. Janki Raman, your voice is breaking. Okay, let me come back a bit later then. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitalani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, just two questions. Uh, uh, we saw a uh, drop in the gross margins. Of, uh, uh, any reason if you could attribute, is it mixed change or uh, is it certain uh, pricing pressure that we were facing because of increased raw material prices? You don't know. It's, it is mixed change and channel change. Different channels give us different margins. So if online, for instance, it's uh, growing faster, our margin will be marginally smaller. And uh, these things happen. I mean, if the product will, some products we make less, some products we make more. So if the product mix is different, we'll also see lower margin. But our margin never changes. You would have also seen that our EBITDA is very stable. Compare it with last year's Q2, you would see it's very, very stable. I understand. Uh, would it be possible to share the mix that you have been sharing normally uh, between the channel um, this quarter versus last quarter? We, I suggest we leave that out. We've told you already online is between 24 and 25 percent. Now, we've also told you that the large format did not pick, pick up uh, till the uh, second half of the quarter, really. Uh, let me also tell you that our general trade is rock steady, stable at the same contribution as what we've shared earlier, and so is the case with PXL. You can probably depart after that. Sure. And how about CSD? Uh, any change in the mix from that? CSD has gone down, has gone down because there's been an active uh, effort by the uh, canteen stores department to actually limit customers due to COVID in the canteens. And that is changing in the Q3, so you are seeing a positive outlook for Q3. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our last question for today. As there are no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to the management for closing remarks. Sandro? Yes, we uh, we've had a very good quarter as we, as we began by saying. Uh, and we are looking at that very positive outlook uh, continue all the way through to October and even till today. And we are hoping that the same continues till the end of this Q3. The festival sales, because Diwali has been delayed, has been quite good for us. Uh, overall demand has been good. The channels have been supply have, have been quite positive, and most of the channels are now active. So things are looking quite positive, and we hope to come back with good results in Q3 as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Ambit Capital Private Limited, that conclude this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.